morning. Uh, the role I've been given this morning is to talk about the capital renal scintigraphy in the evaluation, the renovascular hypertension. As the earlier speakers have talked enough about it, Dr. V. T. Shah gave a long list of uh, various causes of hypertension, including renovascular hypertension, secondary hypertension, and renovascular hypertension consists 1 to 2% of that group. So overall, a very small group of patients, but a very important one because there are there is a scope, as the earlier studies have shown, possibility of better controlling and offering uh, something to uh, these patients. So the underlying pathophysiology has been discussed, and basically the Iranian angiotensin uh, aldosterone pathway is the main pathway, which is thought to be activate it coming into the play to cause the post-tenotic uh, dilatation in the uh, renal artery so that the pressure head is maintained and the, uh, the, the GFR is maintained in the kidney once uh, there is a stenosis in the renal artery and the fall in GFR. So the, there is a compensation. So there it could be on the one side, one kidney artery stenosis or on the both sides as in arthritis, sometimes we see that scenario in young adults. So pathophysiology is very important because this test or this uh, uh, the, the, the diagnostic tool which we use in nuclear medicine to help uh, with labeling the patient is based on the changing pathophysiology of the disease, which though is not as simple as that, and it is now known that there are many pathways which come into play and not only the renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway. Nevertheless, so angiotensin 1 conversion into angiotensin 2, you know, mediated by ACE and the downway, the cascade is what we has been talked, vasoconstriction, sodium retention, aldosterone secre secretion, and even the sympathetic nerve system activity. And end organ damage on the on the on the card myocardium, renal, wherever the end. So it's usually part of the systemic disease, and renal artery may be the culprit. So we're looking at and trying to find that if we can nail that and 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 help this small group of patients. So screening for the renovascular hypertension, that's where our role comes in. And uh, so uh, screening has been discussed, so which are the patient where you really suspect, you know, sudden change in uh, the controlled blood pressure, young adults coming first time, unilateral small kidney, and, uh, you know, impairment of renal function to ACE inhibitors. That is another indication which uh, nephrologists notice and they suspect, okay, the renal artery may be involved. So how to go about and uh, there are many tests, Mona just talked about the CT and we are going to listen about the MRA also. So as uh, most of you are from cardiology or general uh, you know, physician or our uh, imaging friends, we talk about this scenario in the, in the cardiology where we look for coronary artery uh, uh, involvement, stenosis with our myocardial perfusion test and also by the coronary angiography or CT angiography. The scenario comes, I, we are looking for a for sure sign and symptom or with imaging that yes, the artery is stenosis and in this particular patient can be helped by dilating or intervening. But there are issues, the, the, what has been found till now by the study is that there is no one-to-one -one causal you know, correlation between the stenosis and the renal vascular hypertension. So that is the main problem. But still, it's a significant finding if one finds a stenosis in a sudden onset or uncontrolled or malignant hypertension young patient, one would like to look for the remedial causes which, which can help the young patient lead a normal life. So the, the, after taking the history and people do the Doppler, most of the time that's what is now being done, Doppler MRC study and the DTP and DMSA studies also come along with that as a screening tool and with the clinical history and blood pressure, you can increase the suspicion to more than 99 percentile if one of these tests comes positive in the screening. And then you can go for the 
for the anatomical tool to really nail whether it's a segmental artery involved or it is the main artery. And along with that, the, the other ratios which were earlier mentioned by the nephrologist and from that you can make out that the one or the both the arteries are involved. So how the schema works is different from place to place. But as I was mentioning the case of our nuclear cardiology, when we are looking for the significance of the stenosis and specifically in a moderate stenosis, 50 to 70 percent block on our angiographic or CT where we are doubtful whether the intervention would help. We go for the medical treatment or we go for the intervention. Exactly the same issue arises here. In the moderate one, that renal efficiency or obesity is there, then you can, you know, go for drugs and obesity, no renal efficiency. It is being proposed that captopril renography can help. If it's negative, you observe or put on drugs, continue your drug combina uh, combination. And if it comes positive, that means it puts the patient in high probability group for the renal vascular hypertension. Then you can go for the MRA. So as shown in the earlier slide and this one, some people would like to do is use it as a screening tool upfront as soon as patient comes, test dates are available. They will ask for any of these non-invasive tests, including the DTP and DMSA, and other would really first find that there is a moderate, you know, stenosis, and then they would go and look for the significance of this moderate uh, uh, stenosis by doing the uh, uh, captopril renograph. So the mechanism is well known. The renal angiotensin system is activated. So what we do is just we just uh, give the captopril to block that compensatory mechanism and. While doing that, we do our DTPA or MAG3 scan pre and post captopril. So two studies are basically done and the change in the renal functional parameter of perfusion and parenchymal uptake and the clearance from the parenchyma are observed, which yes. are yes. very clearly seen on our imaging studies. And these are very old studies and have been going for quite uh, some time. So one can either use captopril or now anapril can also be used injectable one and there are advantage and disadvantage of it. So once we that do that, we categorize the patient into the high probability unilateral deterioration in the renogram uh, that is high probability and it can be done by MAG3 or DTPA, intermediate probability. So there are definition how we categorize this into the high probability intermediate and low probability. So it's the high probability group, probably which is going to be, uh, you know, uh, helped by the intervention. Though, as I said, right in the beginning, the causal relationship between the stenosis and uh, the, the, the hypertension is not there. So that's why the additional studies are require, required to find the function of that stenosis, that it is a functional stenosis that the pathophysiology which has changed and if it can be reserved, will the patient be helped? And as I said repeatedly, one-to-one -one relation is not there, but still there is a possibility as studies where this uh, intervention has been done and seen which are the patients which are helped. So these are the groups which have come up. So renogram standard, the zero curve is normal. So we see change in the P, or flattening of the curve. There are technical parameters. When we say post-captopril, the renogram has deteriorated. That means the, 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 when we call the dilatation of the post-stenotic uh, dilatation and the pressure head falls, and which we are causing artificially with captopril or analapril. So the pressure head falls and the renal function deteriorates. So that is an evidence that there is, yes, a, a functional significant stenosis of the renal artery. Along with that, there is another thing, which is we call the aspirin renography. Very few st studies are there. The pathway is through the prostaglandin system, which also gets activated, which was mentioned in one of the slides of Dr. Uh, Sharad Seat also. So more than one mechanism can be uh, there. So we have tried this and the, it works quite well as captopril. So you, you can choose one of these. Exercise renography is there. So a subpopulation of nephron can be different. Again, Dr. Shade mentioned it. So you have to tease out what is the basic pathophysiological functional 
thing going around the stenosis and then accordingly tailor your uh, treatment. So when we come, various landmark trials have been done in stenosis and basically ACC, HA guidelines have come and the benefit of revascularization with stenosis. So all have been criticized for not including the high enough patient of the right category. So these trials are very difficult to do. So at the best, what we can draw is a, a, a very light conclusion from that. And therefore, the DTPSCT scan is still very much valid. Either you add it as a screening tool or you add it later once you have confirmed the renal artery stenosis and now you want to find the functionality. So the comparison of various tools, that's a very big discussion, which one is better and not. The ultimate aim is, the, will the patient get better by in, uh, intervention? Which is that golden test which tells us, so there is no golden test basically, which gives us 100% or much higher level than the other that intervention in this particular group of patient will work. 2014, there is a consensus report on renal vascular by their, uh, the nuclear medicine groups. Many studies were included and they said captopril works well, though the specificity, there is a wide, broad range. So it might not work in all patients. So that is a caveat which one has to keep in mind, but it works well. So if you add it to your anatomical screening, after anatomical screening or before, so in combination, both of them will give you better hold and a, a better risk. So when and how to revascularize? So again, using anatomical and functional modality is better. Various guidelines are there, European and all. Usually they mention like the, uh, the captopril lenography is not a screening tool, but there are other voices also. And the area is open because there is not uh, a well-known causal relationship between stenosis and, and, and the renovascular hypertension. So at the end, I would summarize by saying that the patient with hypertension who have a functional significant renal artery stenosis and who would benefit from revascularization can be helped by the captopril reno uh, vascular uh, renography and that subsegment of patient can be teased out along with the help of anatomical imaging. Thank you.